So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Okay, let's start. Uh, previously, we studied something about hill climbing, and now we are going to study the simulated annealing. And first, we will get some background about this topic. So, I want to stop my video. So, so this is the first point about the simulated annealing. And uh, this slide is just giving some background about the topic. Uh, according to this first point, and according to our previous knowledge of hill climbing algorithm, we know that that algorithm never moves toward the states which have a lower value. So what it means, it means that in hill climbing, we have a loop and in that loop uh, we always select those states which have the higher value than the current uh, value of the state that we have. So it means that hill climbing always uh, accepts the higher values of the states and it never moves towards some uh, those states which have the lower values. And due to this property, we normally say that it always, for example, if we are not at the global maximum and if we are at the local maximum, then we can only reach at that local maximum. And uh, uh, in that algorithm or by using that uh, hill climbing algorithm, we will not ever achieve the global maximum. Um, I'm not talking about the different versions of the hill climbing. I am simply talking about the hill, the basic algorithm of the hill climbing. So according to its concept, so that algorithm is basically, which is not able to give us the global ma maximum, then it means that that algorithm is incomplete because it can get stuck on a local maximum. So, and, and when we were studying about the different versions of the hill climbing algorithm, then we sometime, uh, uh, maybe I can show you that slide. Uh, here, in that algorithm, when we were studying different versions of the hill climbing, this is the last one in which we studied that this random restart hill climbing is some kind of algorithm in which we normally uh, randomly initialize the hill climbing algorithm with the random initial condition. And then if we will get better results, then we will update the results that we already achieved. So this is the se uh, uh, second point mentioned here. So this is also the random restart hill climbing. And this stochastic hill climbing is also something in which we normally select the neighbors or the next uh, states or the successors randomly. So these are two approaches in the different versions of hill climbing in which we have this random selection of the successors. So now here in this point, number two of the simulated annealing, you can see that. So just forget this first point and now concentrate only on the second point. So this second point is saying that if you normally do some random work, uh, uh, random work about what? If you normally, or if we normally do some random work uh, in selecting the next successors, for example, we are at current state and there are some neighbors, maybe two or three are successors, then if we, if we have an approach like this, that we can select those successors randomly. Randomly, the condition is randomly. For example, if we are at a current state and the next successors are uh, uh, in quantity, for example, in quantity, they are four or five. And if we have the random selection approach, then we can select the first successor or the third or the fifth one. So you can select the successor randomly. So this approach, this random approach, either it is stochastic, either it is random restart hill climbing, 
those versions of the basic hill climbing algorithm are called complete algorithm in the literature that's why it is mentioned here in second point in 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 this second point that they are complete but there is an issue with those uh, uh, approaches that they are extremely inefficient what it means it means that if we are uh, randomly selecting initial condition again and again and we are not uh, are reaching at the global maximum we know that at one time we will reach at the global maximum but we are not reaching at the global maximum so what it means we are basically wasting the time or we are consuming the too much time and same is the case with the other random selection in the stochastic hill climbing so the first point is saying that the basic hill climbing algorithm is incomplete and the second point is saying that we have the random versions but those versions and even those versions are complete but there is an issue with this random approach that they normally consume uh, too much time so that's why they are said extremely inefficient so now the third approach this is not basically the third approach this is our conclusion uh, about the two points that we discussed here in this slide so the conclusion is do we have some mechanism through which we can combine this basic hill algorithm basic hill climbing algorithm or this random uh, movement you can say so basically third point is saying that we want to try to combine hill climbing with a random walk in some way that yields both efficiency and completeness. So what do we want? We want to combine the basic hill climbing algorithm and the random uh, hill climbing. We can say simply random hill climbing because if we can combine, then what we will get? We will get the efficiency and the other thing is that our algorithm will be complete so this approach is available at this concept of uh, simulated annealing which is another algorithm and some people call it heat and cool algorithm also why heat and cool because uh, initially this approach was by was used by the physicist um, uh, they normally uh, uh, maybe you have seen in uh, different um, ironing shops for example if we want to uh, in the history when the people wants to uh, uh, prepare or when they want to build some weapon like sword then and they have the metal in the raw form then what they normally do they normally give high temperature high heat you can say in the beginning and with the passage of time they just hit that metal again and again with some small hammer or big hammer whatever you want to say and then just pouring some a small amount of water over it and so in this process they are hitting and watering hitting and watering and finally they are shipping that uh, uh, metal into the form of a sword so that was the mechanism of heat and cool and this theory was used by the physicist at, in the beginning so that's why the name is simulated annealing so now now move on to the next slide so uh, here on this slide uh, now we will talk about the simulated annealing but with respect to our previous uh, hilly area our hilly state space that we studied in in uh, hill climbing algorithm so um, the first point is saying that imagine the task of getting a ping pong ball into the deepest crevice uh, crevice mean narrow opening in a bumpy surface so we have to assume that we have some bumpy surface or you can say we have some uh, hilly area because there are many bumps there and uh, 
and if there are bumps then there should be some top position and there should be some uh, deepest positions you can say and uh, if we just let the ball roll it will come to rest at a uh, local minimum so now think that if you have many bumps in your state space and currently you just pick your ball and then you can just uh, uh, release the ball from the top of the bump, then what will happen? We know that the ball will roll down and it will reach at the deepest, uh, not the deepest point, but it will reach at the lo local minimum. So just, uh, uh, I am now, for example, uh, I will try to pause now and I will show you on my small whiteboard of my daughter that I borrowed from her. So just a moment. So, so this is basically, I just borrowed this whiteboard from my daughter and now I, uh, I want to show you what that sentence of ping pong, ping pong ball is saying. So assume that there is some kind of bumpy surface. So this is just assume it, it is a bumpy surface and if you have your ball here or if you release your ball here then this ball can go either in this direction or in that direction so this these are your local minimum so the, this is the local minimum and for example this is something the deepest point the crevice so so this is something the crevice i am saying so if you just release the ball here then the ball can go here at this local minimum or the ball can go here at this local minimum so and even if your ball is here then the ball can go here at this local minimum or the ball can go here at this deepest level which is your global minimum so 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 the theory is how we can implement this simulated annealing algorithm. So just, just assume that there's, the ball is here and if you just release the ball, then just assume here that the ball will come here at this, at this position. Now I am just deleting that point. So now your ball reached at this local minimum. So, now this is not your requirement because you want to reach at the global minimum the deepest river but your ball is currently at the local minimum so assume that this white board is your state space what what you can do now we can shake we can shake this state space and what will happen the ball will just strike here or the ball will just strike here. The ball will just strike here and here. And it can happen that ball will come out of this area. And, and then when it will fall down, it will then reach at this point. So, so I have to do what? I have to shake this whole state space. So, but the sense is, that we don't have to shake the state space too much that the ball will go out of the state space for example maybe here or maybe out of out of this out of the area of this uh, small white board so we don't have to shake too much enough so we have to shake enough so that the ball will come out of this area and will go either into the, the, this position maybe here or maybe here so when it will go here then it will reach here and then we have, you have to shake it again so that the ball will come here or the ball will in this way in this sequence 
you have to shake it again and again so that your ball will come here if for this is something your desired uh, area and then only you can reach at this global minima so we have to so what we can do now we have to shake it initially we have to shake it hard and then gradually we have to shake it uh, uh, slowly and slowly so that it can reach uh, here i am just stopping this uh, uh, video sharing and then i will continue to my slides and then i, I will give you further concepts so here it comes it comes and i i was on this slide so this point is saying what i just explained on that small whiteboard and this point is saying the same story which i told you and what is that story we have to read it so that we can just uh, justify that what we have said it is already on the slide so if we shake the surface or the state space we can bounce the ball out of the local minima so that is the same that local minima where i have said that you have to shake it hard so that it can come out of that local minima the trick is that uh, that we have to shake just hard enough to bounce the ball out of the local minima so it's a plural because I just give you one or two examples of uh, uh, local minimums and then if it is plural then you can understand that uh, um, it is local minima. So we don't have to shake hard enough to dislodge it or to dislocate it. Dislodge means dis dislocate it from the global minima. So we don't want to uh, shake it so hard that it will go out of the state space and we will not uh, be able to reach at the global minimum. So we, we don't want that situation. So this is the second point which is saying something about that ping pong, ping pong ball uh, scenario. So <clears throat> find the final uh, point is saying that um, now we have this uh, for example now we have we can compare the heat and cool, cool theory which i explained earlier with this uh, shaking hard and then gradually shaking uh, slow uh, uh, so you can compare that heat and cool, cool theory with this shaking hard and shaking slow uh, 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 theory <clears throat> So last point is saying simulated annealing solution is to start by shaking hard that is at the highest temperature or you can say at a highest cost. So when we are talking about some state space then we have something the current states the states in that state space and we have some cost or the value of those states so that's why uh, th uh, this cost is mentioned the term cost is mentioned here so simulated uh, annealing solution is to start by shaking hard so initially we have to shake it hard with high intensity or if i compare this point with the physics theory then we have to give a uh, high heat or high temperature or if we have to talk uh, with respect to our hill climbing algorithm if if i if i have to talk with respect to the states then i can just mention that initially i have to select states with high cost okay and then gradually reduce the intensity of the shaking and then i have to shake uh, the state space with lower intensity with reduced intensity or i can say with lower cost or I can say according to physics theory that I have to reduce the temperature. So this is this theory is basically simulated annealing. So you can conclude that in simulated annealing we have to initially uh, start with the high cost or high temperature uh, and then we have to gradually 
come towards the lower caste or the reduced temperature, you can say. So this is called simulated annealing. And how we can implement this concept of simulated annealing uh, uh, to, to computer science, you can say. So now we are going towards the actual slide, which will focusing more uh, with respect to computer science. And uh, here <coughs> you can say that simulated annealing, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. <coughs> so simulated annealing is some kind of a probabilistic technique that is so here it is said that it is a probabilistic technique so what you can expect now so we have to calculate some kind of probability in this algorithm so that's why it is called probabilistic technique and we have to approx so this is simulated annealing and this is probabilistic technique and we can use this technique uh, to estimate or to approximate the global optimum of a given function. So global optimum means it can be global minimum, it can be global maximum. So through this technique, through this probabilistic technique, we can find uh, the global maximum or the global minimum of a given problem or, or of a given function. And and this technique normally used when we have the state space or the search space in a discrete form. And what is the meaning of discrete? I told you many times that we have a, some uh, short thing to understand the, uh, the concept of discrete. That this, if we are saying that discrete state space, then it means that we have different states and all the states are unique. So in this kind of a state space, we can use uh, uh, this uh, concept of simulated annealing. So now we have to focus on the uh, second point. And this point is giving you the concept about those situation in which you can use this algorithm and the situations in which you don't have to use this algorithm. So, so what are the situations where you can use this uh, algorithm? So this is mentioned in this uh, second point. So if we have problems uh, like, for example, we don't need the actual precise optimal solution or we don't need actual precise accurate, accurate global maximum or global minimum. We don't want that. Rather, we want a solution which is close to the optimal solution or which is close to the global maximum or minimum. So, so in short, you can say if you are finding a substandard, not substandard, if you are finding a solution which will be very close to your optimal solution, then this is the situation in which you can use this simulated annealing. And you can throw other algorithms uh, like brute force and gradient descent. You, you don't have to use those algorithms if you have a situation like this one. And now you can read it. For problems where finding the precise global optimum is less important for you than finding an acceptable global uh, optimum. You don't need, uh, so, so for example, the global optimum. Rather, you can live with an acceptable global optimum than and you have also the limited time in a fixed amount of time. It is mentioned here. And if you, you, for example, in this situation, you also have the limited time. You don't have enough time that you will wait for that global optimum or global maximum or minimum. You don't have the time uh, for that accurate solution. Maybe you have just uh, 40 minutes or just uh, maybe 15 minutes. Uh, and in this short period of time, then you can use this simulated annealing and it will give you your result, which will be very much close to your optimal solution. 
because we know that in brute force search we have to try all the combination and then only you can get your solutions so that is not something that you are searching for so if you have a limited time and you can sacrifice your global optimum then simulator annealing is the best option for you to to apply on your problems so this is something that this second point is saying so now move on so this is the algorithm now uh, simulated annealing algorithm and what this algorithm is saying just focus on this first line function simulated annealing and it we can just give any problem to this algorithm what it means that you it means that you can fix the simulated annealing algorithm onto your uh, uh, problems but this fixation of simulated annealing algorithm on those problems for this you have to do much but this is not the part here so anyhow so your problem is uh, uh, is input to this simulated annealing algorithm along with the schedule and i will tell you what this schedule means so this schedule is uh, some kind of a mapping and what is that mapping uh, in this schedule or you can say this schedule is some kind of a uh, list with two columns in the first column you have the time and in the second column you have the temperature in the second column you have the temperature so this is called uh, the schedule so schedule or schedule is also going as an input to this algorithm and this algorithm will return us uh, a solution which is a solution state let's see what will happen just i just explained it what the meaning of this first line is so now these are the input variables first the problem the problem itself which is coming as an input to this algorithm and then schedule we know that what schedule means is because we have got the understanding a moment ago and now the initial state of the problem will go to this current variable so this is very much familiar uh, to you according to your uh, uh, previous uh, uh, studies that you have uh, um, uh, you know that i gave a uh, uh, lecture about hill climbing and before that we studied many searching algorithms and in those algorithms this was the situation that we have some kind of current variable always so now come to word the next statement so next statement is simply a for loop uh, starting with t is equal to 1 to infinity what is this t this this t is basically your time which is the time here in this schedule or schedule so time was the first column in the schedule and uh, here the time is starting from t is equal to 1 to infinity so what it means this will loop will go or r will run uh, continuously up to infinite times uh, and uh, then we know that we must have some mechanism in the code under this for loop to break this loop or to come out of this algorithm you can say anyhow so the next statement is saying that we are just giving this t value to this schedule which is a list you can also consider it as a function and this function is containing a list uh, first column is the time and the second column is the temperature just stop it here i will just show you on my small board so that you can uh, understand this con concept uh, uh, more clearly so i'm just pausing the video and then i will come up with the small board again so this is the small board and just a moment so now for example I can give you an idea that for example about the schedule what I am going to explain about the schedule so so just I am just going to explain the schedule in this algorithm yeah this is the schedule 
So this is your uh, T and uh, just a moment. I can write it straight. So this is your T and then we have uh, uh, temperature and then we have some other thing. I can see it from the slide. Mm. T is the time and then we have the temperature. Okay. So now I am going again to, so here it comes. So this is the time and then we have the capital T for the temperature. So this is what? So this is temperature and this is, okay, I don't want to, this is time. This is time. So here you can assume that this is time. So initially the time is here one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And then similarly, you have uh, uh, the values like, for example, the temperature. Maybe initially you have the temperature highest 100 and then 99 and then 98 and then 97 and 96 and so on. So this is the form of the schedule you can see. And now I'm going back to my slides by just pausing this video and going back to those slides by sharing it. So just a moment. So here it comes and I am also going to uh, stop my video and uh, this, these are the slides. Okay, so where we were, we were at this statement. So now you can understand that when t is equal to one, uh, then we have this, uh, when t is equal to one from the schedule, what we will get? We will get the temperature 100. Why? This is something I have explained on that small board that uh, when t is equal to one, you will get the temperature 100. So now if capital T is 100 and small t is one, then what will happen now the next statement? If this capital T, which is 100, so 100 equal to zero, no, condition is false. And I will come here on this next statement. And what this next statement is saying, that we have some kind of next variable, but from what value we will get, a randomly selected successor or neighbor of current. So we have this current variable as an initial condition and uh, maybe we have three or four or different uh, neighbors of this current variable, then we will select some neighbor of this current variable randomly and that selected neighbor will go into this variable that is called next. And the next statement is simply the difference of the, this next state minus current states. So the value of next, maybe value of the next, uh, I don't know, but maybe for example, it is something uh, I will show you here when I will come here on this slide. So, if it is something, if the value of the next state is higher and the value of the current state is lower, then I will get something, a positive value in this variable delta E. Basically, this delta E is according to the mechanics and here delta means the difference of energy because this algorithm is written according to the physics. As I told you that simulated annealing was originated from the physics uh, uh, branch of study. 
So delta is what? Delta E means the difference of energy. So this is the next state and this is the current state. And if the next state has higher value, maybe in temperature and current value, uh, I am talking about the physics according to physics theory. And the current value for the brief have the lower temperature, then, then the difference in energy you will get here. But this is something according to the theory of the physics. But now you have to focus uh, with respect to computer science. So I have something next as a state and the value of the next state if it is higher and the value of the current state if it is lower then the difference would be positive here in this variable. And if the value of the next is lower and the value of the current is higher then the difference I will get here in this variable would be a negative value. This is sure, this is sure, this is sure, would be a negative value, value, value. Statement. First, I am assuming when you have this delta E as a positive value. So when delta E is positive, delta E greater than zero means when it is greater than zero, when it is positive, then what I am doing, I am updating this next variable, this next, because that next state has a higher value. So I am updating this next variable in this current variable. So what I am doing, I am selecting the next state here in this statement. And if my delta E is negative value, as I discussed here, and when it will be negative, when my current, the value of the current would be higher. So if it is not positive, it is, uh, for example, the negative value, then this condition will false and I will come here at the else portion. And then the next will be updated in the current variable only there is a condition here and this is the probabilist, probabilistic condition or the condition which involves some kind of probability so so i can update this next variable into this current variable but only if the probability e the probability is like this and what is that equation e raised power delta e divided by t delta e you know that delta e is the difference of the energy and t you already know that t is the temperature so we have to divide the difference of the energy with the temperature so for example temperature here it is 100 and uh, delta e suppose it is positive or maybe negative minus 25 or like that so then we have some kind of a division and then we have to take the exponent and if your exponent if this is the probability and if this probability is between 0 and 1 probability always lies between 0 and 1 we know that but if the value of the probability is close to 1 not close to 0 which means uh, maybe 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.6. It's, it's basically, I will discuss these things later on that how you can uh, make some kind of a threshold, but, but leave this uh, discussion for a moment. So if you will get some probability, either one or 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 or 0 0.7 something, so something close to one, then you can apply this next state you can apply this next state uh, to this current state what it means that you can update the value of the next with this current so when you will come here at this else portion now you have to understand now you have to understand this point actually so when your delta e is positive it always means that your next value is higher because according to the difference your next value when delta is positive it always means that your next value is higher and then you are simply updating the next value to the current value but when your delta is negative what it means it means the next state the next state that you are uh, you are observing 
has the lower value and if next state has the lower value then you will get some negative value here at, at delta i and here else means we normally arrive at this statement of else when we have this negative value of delta i so negative means so when we have the negative value of delta i and we are approaching this else portion and what it means that the next state has lower value okay and if the next state has lower value but if the probability of that next state is approaching to 1 which means either 1 or 0.9 or 0.8 or something then you can update even you can update this next state into the current state even the next state has the lower value so this is basically the crux uh, of this uh, simulated annealing algorithm that it allows uh, the bad movements so this is basically the bad movement for, because in that movement you are allowing to go from current state to the next state even your next state has the lower value so this is the bad movement but this is necessary you can now understand how it is necessary maybe for example uh, 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 like a ping pong uh, for example i have given you an example of a ping pong a, a moment ago so if you are at the top but that top is not your global maximum that is local maximum so what you can do now you have to move either on left side or the right side to go to some local minimum and then you have to rise it again if that right is again and you have to continue this process until you will reach at your global maximum so so maybe maybe you are understanding and maybe some of the students are not understanding well i will try to explain it on the small board also but before that i can discuss something more there more so if you are at a local maximum not at a global maximum and but then this is something uh not required that is not something your solution so now you have to do what you have to move either on the left side of the hill either or on the right side of the hill but if you will continue your movement then those movements will be towards the downward direction of the hill and downward means that you are already at some state which has the higher value and if you move down then you will experience some states which have, will have some lower value but this is something necessary to reach at the global maximum so that's why this algorithm normally allows us to do some bad movements when your probability is approaching to one and when your probability end and this probability will always approach to or will always close to your one when the value of this temperature would be higher in the beginning so this algorithm or from this algorithm you will get the probability close to one when the value of this capital t you will get initially at higher we know that initially it would be 100 and then 99 then 98 and then 97 and so on so initially the value of capital t is higher and when the value of the capital t would be higher then there is a quite chances that you will get your probability very close to the one and uh, that is the situation that uh, when you have this probability close to the one uh, then you are allowing the, these bad movements what it means that you are allowing to go towards the downward direction of the hill uh, and this is necessary to reach at the global maximum as i explained earlier so this is basically the understanding of the simulated annealing algorithm and now i will explain this probability further on the next slide so this and in this way this loop will go on and go on so um, 
so just a moment i am again pausing my recording and i will explain this thing uh, on the board again so i am again just showing you what that probability means so i am going to discuss this e exponent uh, <clears throat> delta e divided by t i am going to explain this concept <clears throat> and we talked about uh, this equation that this is some kind of a probability in simulated annealing algorithm and this probability uh, uh, would be closer to one and then only you can allow uh, to update the value of the next variable in the current variable which also means that you are allowing uh, to move uh, uh, towards the downward direction of your hill. So for example, so if you have the hills like that, and uh, if currently, if your current state is here at this point, this is your current state, and and here you have the further points and if randomly you selected this state if randomly you have selected this state you have selected this state uh, and now this is your next and this is your current and from the next next has the lower value and current has the higher value the difference you will get would be negative okay sure so the difference would be negative and if it is negative then in the algorithm you will come at the else portion and in the else portion i can update the value of the next into this current uh, variable i can update only if my probability is closer to one so 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 this is the situation because this is my global maximum and if i am here this is not my solution so this bad movement this downward movement my algorithm uh, must have to allow this uh, uh, movement in the downward direction so that i will get uh, the states in this direction and when i will reach here then i will again uh, then i will again get my states here next states is here which is which will have some higher value and then from uh, next uh, minus current i will get positive and positive values are always accepted and this way we will rise towards this top position and again this is not the global maximum so i will again select this next statement maybe randomly i am just focusing on the track i am not talking about other things those are the these other things are understood so so in this way the next is again lower and the current is higher then i will get negative value but my if my probability would be closer here closer to one then it will allow me to go down again and then i will maybe i will get some states here and again and again i will keep going on and at some point i will reach here so so maybe i will again consume too much time but at some point i will reach here at the global maximum due to this probability equation which is lying in the simulated annealing algorithm and this is the beauty of the simulated annealing algorithm so anyhow i am again stopping this uh, uh, video and going back to those shared slides so this was the algorithm and uh, I, now i hope that you have the understanding of this algorithm uh, of simulated annealing uh, so now now come to this next slide it is just an explanation of the algorithm and uh, if we will get some new thing then i will explain those things to you again so what this simulated annealing algorithm do or does instead of picking the best move 
however it picks a random move we know this thing because this was the condition this was the condition in the algorithm that it normally select the successor randomly so this is the same thing instead of picking the best move however it picks a random move so it will select randomly it will select states randomly and it doesn't mean that it will select states uh, by considering something and it will select some states which are the best states no it will simply select the states randomly and if the move if the new state improves the situation which means if the next state has higher value than our current uh, state if this this means that the situation is improved now so if the move improves the situation it is always accepted so the value with the higher states from the current states are always accepted so this is for sure this is uh, no anything to discuss uh, too much uh, the other thing other thing is that the algorithm accepts the move with some probability slightly less than 1 r1 it is not mentioned here but you can you can you can also consider uh, the probability probability value exactly one you can also consider this value <laughs> so algorithm will also accept those states uh, if the probability of those states are close to one or slightly less than one and that is something i said that 0.9 or 0.8 something like that it's up to us we will discuss this thing point number two this probability also decreases as the temperature t goes down so this point is saying that initially when we you have the higher value of t capital t then at that moment maybe you will have uh, your probability uh, with the higher value and then it means that maybe my probability value uh, would be closer to one so but with the passage of time my probability value decreases when the value of this capital T decreases. So, so what it means, it means that initially when I will have the value of this capital T higher, then I will have this probab probability value higher, which means that the probability value would be closer to this one. So, so initially, we will when it will be closer to one then initially we will allow these bad movements uh, more likely or you can say that initially we will allow bad movements means to move towards the downward direction of the hill so uh, when we will have these probability values higher and it will have higher values only initially are in the from the initial stages of the algorithm to the mid stages of the algorithm you can say so from the mid to, from the initial to the mid uh, status of the algorithm uh, we will allow normally these bad movements and these bad movements will occur more often initially when when the value of the t is higher and it will become more it will become occurring less when the value of the t would be uh, decreased and what it means i just quoted some examples here to have an understanding and you can see that here it is e e for exponent and there this minus 25 means delta e this is the value of the delta e when we have the negative value and then divided by 100 100 is the value of the capital t and then if you will uh, conclude the exponent then you will get this value 0.778 which you can say it is approaching to it is more close to one rather than the zero and similarly if you have uh, minus 25 and divided by 25 then you will have this value minus 35 and it is more close to zero and not close to one so this you can see now here you can see the value of the capital T is quite uh, low are uh, lower as compared to this previous one and when the value of this capital T is decreased 
we don't have that probability in which we can say that this probability will allow us to move uh, towards the downward direction. This is very close. This is close to zero and not close to one. And similarly, when it is minus 25 divided by 20, then we have minus 28. And when it is 10, it is 0 0.08. And from these examples now, you can understand that when your, the value of your capital T is higher, then you will get uh, probability values more closer to this one. And now comes the third point. If the schedule, this is the function that you have in the algorithm. If the schedule lowers t slowly enough. So in the algorithm, the function that we have and the name of that function is, uh, uh, is schedule. If that function lowers the value of capital T slowly and slowly, then what will happen? the algorithm will find a global optimum with prob probability approaching to one. So slowly and slowly means that initially the value of the capital T would be higher. And if there is a situation of uh, local maximum, then it will allow bad movements. And then states will go down towards the downward direction of the hill. And similarly, and if your algorithm will stuck at some local maximum during initial condition, then this bad movement, this probability mechanism will allow us to move towards the downward direction and find another solution. So in this way, this simulated annealing will surely find the global optimum with probability with prob uh, probability approaching one. <laughs> so now, so now this is the discussion that I promised uh, in earlier slides that we will discuss these things later on. So in our algorithm, we have some kind of probability function and that is that one e raised power, e raised power delta e over t. And we call this equation the acceptance probability function. So this equation is called what? This equation is acceptance probability function. And this delta E involves the next state and the current state, which means the old cost and the new cost. What it means? Old cost means the value of the current state. New cost means the value of the next state. And capital T means current temperature. And this function will take these values and it will give us our spits out a number. It will give us a probability value. That value would be between zero and one. This is something we know already. So, which is a sort of a recommendation. So this number that we will get from zero to one, this number would be a sort of recommendation on whether on whether or not to jump to the new solution. So this number between zero and one means that on the value of this number, we can decide either, we can decide either we have to jump toward the next state or not. For example, if my value is 1.0, which means one, which means the probability one, so what it means, it means definitely switch. I have to definitely switch to the new states or the next states. It means this one, the new solution is better or the new solution is better. If my probability value is 0 .0, 0.0, then it means that this is not good and I have to stay at the current state. Definitely stay put. Definitely I have to stay at the state on which I am, I am already. So what it, what it means in other ways that the new solution is worse and we don't have to move on to the next state. And if the value is 0.5, then the chances are 50-50. So the chances are 50-50. So these are the values. Just giving you an idea that it is up to us that we can fix some threshold either from 0.5 to 1 and we can allow that if probability is between 0.5 to 1 then we can allow to 
to accept the next state. So this is what I mean. So once the, the last point is saying, once the acceptance probability is calculated, so you, we can calculate the acceptance probability by using this equation. So this is something, another approach, which is mentioned in this last point. So by using this equation, you can calculate some probability and then you have to compare, we can compare this probability uh, to a randomly generated number between zero and one. So you can also alter the algorithm in this way. You have some probability value by using this uh, equation. And the other thing, if you are not sure what you have to do, either it is between 0.5 and one, either it is a good uh, approach or not, or like that. If you are not uh, easy with, that, with this approach, then you can opt this approach, which is mentioned in this last point. In this last point, it is mentioned that first you have to calculate the prob probability value by using this equation. Okay, keep it aside. And then you have to randomly generate some number between zero and one. Okay, if, if now what you have to do, if your acceptance probability, that is your first probability that you have calculated uh, in the first step. If, if the acceptance uh, probability is larger than the random number that you have generated in the second step, then what it means, if your acceptance probability is larger than your random number, then you can say, okay, then I am switching. Then it means I am accepting the next state. So this approach you can also apply in your algorithm or you can alter your algorithm with this approach. So this is basically the execution of the simulated annealing on different, uh, this is the state space. And here you are seeing the value of the temperature and it will reiterate again and again. Retry, uh, you are seeing it is the temperature is 0.6 and when the temperature is lower then it is just focusing on one point and it is not moving here and there. So now temperature is zero and you have reached finally here and it is again started. So I have taken this image from this Wikipedia and it is just giving you the idea that how uh, the movement of this red line is showing that, for example, when this red line will come here and this is the local maximum, but the probability value will allow us to move down and down and down. And in this way, we can have some improvements. And when my temperature is uh, lower, maybe uh, uh, you can see after 10, it is focusing only on the global maximum. So this is the execution of the simulated annealing algorithm. And now in the next slide, this slide is just giving you that on which uh, different fields you can apply the concept of this simulated annealing. You can apply the concept of simulated annealing in automatic fingerprints identification. Uh, you can also apply this uh, simulated annealing algorithm to find the uh, base station for the uh, mobile for any mobile company for the wireless base station because you want some point higher uh, or with you can you can say you want some uh, location with a higher altitude. So that's why this simulated annealing algorithm will uh, give you a better solution if you have the pictures of the, your ge geographical area. And similarly, if you have your animals in a form and from th those animals, if you want to select some best fit animals, then simulated annealing can give you help here. And uh, the next application is pharmacokinetics. Uh, this is the study of uh, yeah, the movement of the drugs in the body, actually. So you can also apply this, comes, uh, this algorithm to, to simulate something regarding this uh, example. 
you can also apply the concept of simulated learning on the traveling salesman problem that you already know this is something the computer science, science students know in very much detail you can also apply the same concept for digital circuits and filters and networks and cetera, et cetera. You can understand these things by yourself. You can read these things by yourself. So this is your lab project four. In this project, you have to go to this link and some uh, source code is available there. And that source code is about uh, the application of the simulated annealing algorithm over the traveling salesman problem. You have to download that source code and then you have to configure that source code uh, on your machines. And, uh, but one thing you have to do, you have to augment, you have to modify, you have to extend the source code with these maps as input and output. That source code will give you the output uh, on a black screen or a uh, DOS screen, you can say. Um, so what you have to do, you have to make that program visual like this. So this is, you can say, the input. And uh, when simulated annealing algorithm will run on this uh, input it will give me the output for the traveling salesman problem and by visiting all the cities and then coming back to its initial condition so this is something you already under uh, understand uh, so get a hands-on experience on this example and then submit your report uh, I mentioned with the source code and screenshot because you have to modify the source code. So you have to give me the source code and the screenshots also. So submit your report accordingly before the next lecture. And then there is a topic that is called local beam search at the end uh, of this chapter. This is something, uh, your homework, you have to read it by yourself and a very easy one. Uh, and thank you very much. And uh, inshallah, we will uh, uh, we will meet again and in the next lecture. Up up to then. Okay. Take care. Allah.